The boycott, divestment, and sanctions movement against Israel claims it began organically within Palestinian society in 2005. That is a lie. This video will tell you of the true origins of BDS. The BDS movement is simply the continuation of what is a century-old boycott. For, for more than a century, Palestinians have used boycott. Boycotts against Jews are not something new. Throughout the centuries, Jews were barred from numerous professions. And by the end of the 19th century, anti-Jewish boycotts had become a convenient tool to exclude Jews from social, economic, and political life. From 1922, in the British Mandate of Palestine, the Arab leadership organized crippling boycotts of Jewish businesses. The purpose of these boycotts were to pressure Jews to leave their homes. The boycotts were accompanied by anti-Jewish riots and even included violence against Arabs who dared to do business with Jews. In 1929, Haj Amin al-Husseini, the Mufti of Jerusalem, called for a boycott against Jewish industry, hoping to remove all remaining Jews living in mandatory Palestine. And in December 1945, in the shadow of the Holocaust, the newly formed Arab League adopted an official boycott of Jews living in British Mandate Palestine. Before Israel even existed, they started a boycott. It clearly wasn't a boycott of Israel because there was no Israel. This was a boycott of Jews. The Arab League boycott continued after the establishment of the Jewish state in 1948, but after many decades failed in part because of U.S. federal anti-boycott legislation. But on July 30, 2001, 13 Arab League countries met in Damascus to call for a reactivated boycott against Israel. In order to get around the U.S. anti-boycott legislation, a non-governmental boycott was proposed. The idea for this non-governmental boycott originally began in Iran of all places. In February 2001, a United Nations-sponsored conference in Tehran charged Israel with racism, apartheid, genocide, and crimes against humanity. Predictably, Jewish delegates were excluded from the event. This is where the BDS movement started, in Iran. The Tehran conference led to a second anti-Semitic gathering, the ironically named World Conference Against Racism in Durban, South Africa in late 2001. And this is where BDS was truly born. The anti-Semitism at the Durban conference was overwhelming. Anti-Semitic and Nazi posters were openly displayed. Jewish and Israeli participants were subject to both verbal and physical intimidation. People were distributing or selling copies of the so-called Protocols of the Elders of Zion. Uh, there were people there supporting Nazism and urging a return uh, to Nazi anti-Semitism. From that movement, the new BDS campaign emerged. This openly anti-Semitic forum, which occurred in the midst of the most violent wave of terrorism in Israel, resulted in what constitutes the BDS boycott call. With the failure of the Arab League boycott, and with almost half of the world Jewry living in Israel, the anti-Jewish boycott now underwent a complete rebranding and remessaging. The fight was no longer against Jews, but against Zionist settlers, Israeli racists, or European colonialists. Instead of referring to Israel as the Jewish state, it would be referred to as an apartheid state. Instead of the crass call to kick Jews out, this boycott now had to be a struggle against Israeli oppression. Instead of urging an Arab military takeover, Israel would be pressured to dissolve itself by accepting an alleged 7.25 million descendants of Palestinian refugees. Instead of the boycott being led by the Arab League, it now had to be seen to be led by the Palestinian civil society. This new anti-Jewish boycott also had a brand new name, Boycott, Divestment and Sanctions, or BDS for short. The legitimacy of BDS relies on the false claim that it is a response to a call from Palestinian civil society in 2005. But even anti-Israel activist Norman Finkelstein admits that this is a lie. Palestinian civil society organizations have endorsed this. Who are these organizations? They're NGOs in Ramallah, one-person operations, and they claim to represent what they call this 
thing, Palestinian civil society. Even BDS leaders admit the true roots of BDS. The call for boycott, divestment and sanctions that came out on July 9th, 2005. Um, that was not the beginning of the Palestinian boycott movement, however. It was a culmination of decades of Palestinian uh, boycott initiatives. Uh, for, for more than a century, Palestinians have used boycott. The Palestinian launched the BDS in 2005 and 2004. Yes, it's... Not really, but yes, okay. For historical records, yes. Okay. That's important. It's not good, but it's important. BDS is not an expression of human rights. It is the continuation of the old anti-Jewish boycotts. It is solely designed to pressure the Jewish population of Israel to give in, give up, and leave. This BDS movement is in many ways more frightening. Because it is the reinvented form of anti-Semitism. Is the 21st century form of the 20th century anti-Semitism. The anti-Semitic BDS movement has become a trendy cause for students and professors who should know better. We have to be united in fighting back against BDS. Anti-Semitism has no place in any civilized society. Uh, she connected BDS to anti-Semitism. Do you think that's a, a, a fair linkage? Well, I think there is some of that, absolutely. There's only one word for it, anti-Semitism. Let us call out the BDS movement for what it is. <laughs>